Let's start the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, March 18th, 2014. Come at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined tonight by Justin Gifford. How the hell are you? Uh, pretty good. Slightly <laughs> panicked, but that's panicked. to be understood. Uh, yeah, you've got... I, I, you can't actually panic till April, right? I mean, kids run on time all the time, right? Uh, well, yeah, but I have, like, what, three weeks before... Matt, three weeks max before uh, I don't get to play video games for three months, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> um, do you, were you or your wife were you early babies? Is, is there something to be concerned about? Or do you think it'll be on time? I don't. I don't think I was early. I don't know about Carrie. Um, did your Did your mother tell you that you were also just in time? No, my mom still loves that joke, and it's been how many years? So. <laughs> <laughs> I did get an intern named Justin at work, though. Is he cool? Does he do his well, justice? Yeah, he, yeah, or is yeah, he of the he new? Seems... Or is he of the new? The new Justin variety? And I think I know who you know who I'm resonating. Re- no, he's twenty four, twenty five. Okay, he's not Canadian. He, no, and he ha- and he hates Jasons. Ma- sorry, no. sorry, JP. He's one of us. One of us. One yeah. of us. Um, besides being anxious, what have you been up to? Um, well, we switched from UVerse to Comcast, and there's a whole long story I'm not really going to go into, but it culminated with me drilling a hole in the side of my house about 7.45 last night <laughs> to to run the cable that the UVerse guy had disconnected like three weeks ago. Well, I think your video feed seems clear, so have you noticed an improvement? Uh, everything except Netflix, yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I, my 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 connection uh, on for gaming is super fast. That's the most important thing because you've been playing playing really some games. And we'll get to yeah. That. Um, you also uh, it looks like you went to go see the Veronica Mars movie. You're kind of a super fan. Uh, I I did. I, I went to go see that and it was great. All right, all right. They threw in just enough callbacks in like the first half hour of the movie, <laughs> like where you know the theater was having a good time. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they didn't overdo it either. Like it's the callbacks don't ruin it for people who don't know. Did Veronica it Mars. seem like a movie or a long episode? Mm, I think it was a movie. I mean, the way it ended up was good. Cries out for a sequel, but not in a, not in a bad way. That's um, good. And there were some there were some awesome cameos. That's all you can ask for. I mean, was it kind of surreal? Because that was kickstarted, right? Like, mm-hmm. I can't think of. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of indie films that have been kickstarted, but like one of, I don't know, one of one of that level that's going to get the the big release. Like, I haven't, I can't think of another one that's done that yet. No, there's uh, one coming out from Zach Braff. Yeah, that was the only, but yeah. but other than that, no. And the funny thing is, Rob Thomas, the show's creator, who started this with Kristen Bell, Matchbox Twenty, was uh, no. Okay. Not that Rob Thomas. Just, just um, make sure. Although, although he does, he does joke, and he's like, "We're trying to get the real Rob Thomas to this <laughs> premiere." But um, he and the rest of the cast have just been sort of blown away by this. They're like, "We we're just trying to make a movie, and we figured we might like give you guys DVDs for it." And then it exploded, mm-hmm. and now it's on 350 screens. That's so awesome. very uh, cool. I did, I did gift my digital download to a friend who's a fan who lives in Hawaii. Where they didn't have any screens, so I just sent her the code. True, so my true humanitarian. Good deed. Yeah. Um, we just finished up True Detective because that took all of a couple days to watch because <laughs> there's only a few episodes. Yeah, I gotta watch the rest of it. I watched the first three. Oh, okay. Episodes. All right. So all right. bad. I won't. I won't go into it too much, but really, really dug it while I watched it. It was kind of what, but it's kind of one of those shows like it's. I don't know. There's so much uh, discussion from Matthew McConaughey's character about his philosophy and that kind of stuff. Like, after a while, I start to wonder: was it was it any good, or was it all up its own ass? But I I still really liked it. I liked the atmosphere. I liked the the way they told the story. Um, yeah, and def- definitely intrigued and really curious to see what they're going to do with season two. But um, are they doing a second season? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, I really oh. liked it. It was cool, and especially because the old true crime books were mm-hmm. so 
dark and twisted that, you know, they do true detective and they sort of kept with it. It's definitely dark and twisted. And uh, yeah. it's like, you just don't, I like the uneasiness of like how grounded in reality is this actually going to be? And like, they just, just how, how they kind of flirt with that throughout the entire series is really, really entertaining. And, um, um, yeah, like every time I see a Matthew McConaughey uh, show or movie, I don't know how I'm going to react to him because he's kind of it, – it's hard to see through the McConaughey-ness in, in some of his characters. Um, but Rust Cole is, is a pretty awesome character that goes – like he completely gets lost in it. So that was pretty that – was, that was pretty awesome. I was afraid I was going to be just watching it just to see Woody and – uh, Matthew McConaughey just kind of just be on screen, but it was to- told a good story, and you, know, you stop noticing them yeah. after a while. I, I did like how subdued he played his character. It was unusual. He's normally kind of over the... Both of those guys were normally pretty over the top, and Woody was still Woody, but Matthew McConaughey was like, damn! <laughs> you're subdued and cerebral. This is weird, but, but good. Uh, let's get to the games. Um... Uh, we've got a handful of topics. We'll see which ones we can get through tonight. And uh, the first thing that, that struck me today on Tuesday um, was that they've been talking about it for a while. We knew that SimCity's offline mode and the Diablo 3 auction house, um, the auction house is getting shut down. It ha- ended up happening on the same day, which, you know, as two of the more infamous games in recent memory, I guess, um, especially recent f- uh, infamous features. Um, it was just kind of ironic that they both kind of made their turn on the same day. And um, uh, I know we're, you're not too, you're not particularly invested in either, either series, but um, it's kind of, I don't know. It's a, it's just, it's a fitting conclusion and one that, you know, I'm definitely feeling the effects. We had a Diablo three podcast last week and I'm, I'm excited about that. I still don't think it matters for Sim city, but it was just, uh, when I saw that kind of, kind of come together, I, I, I had a moment, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I would say that they're the most infamous or infamous of games that came out that were supposed to be ready when they were released, yeah. um, in recent memory. Uh, the, and, you know, my wife's been playing SimCity and loves it. We didn't have any problems with it because it was almost a year after it was released. Sure. Um, and I haven't played Diablo 3, not for any lack of enjoying Diablo 2. It just kind of hasn't happened. Um, the auction house always sounded like a horrible idea to me. <laughs> like It was just like, oh, you're going to screw this up. Um, the always online mode... Um, I've kind of, I don't know that I've railed against it because I don't think it's a horrible idea, but it's, again, it's just so potentially fraught with problems that it sounds like uh, ill-advised. Yeah, and Uh, then they, like at the time, they came out and said, this is impossible, we can't do this. And then shortly after, of course, modders made it happen on their own and kind of proved that it was possible, but... I don't know. I was I, with, with that side. Like the auction house thing didn't surprise me. You know, Blizzard kind of stays in touch with their fans, and this was a big, big change. And it makes sense that it's coming uh, before um, the expansions released. Like you know, they're continually supporting that game. Yeah. SimCity, on the other hand, is just kind of like I don't like. Th- thanks for doing this, but really, you're still putting a bunch of resources to making this happen. Like to getting this right. Like it's almost. You'd think they would have moved on by now, and it was just kind of like, I don't, you know, uh, this, I don't see this like, maybe it's you know, EA does need some goodwill outreach to its fans for sure. So this is yeah. a PR victory more than anything. But um, I well, can't. it's a PR victory. But the, I guess the thing that surprised me about it, not so much that they were putting effort into it, but it was like you guys fixed the problems. <laughs> like, uh, okay, there's an offline mode, but nobody no, I mean, cares anymore. Yeah, the game I mean, works. The the only big problem still out there is the is the city size and that you knew that wasn't going to change so it's just kind of like I've already written it off I'm not going to go go back to it at this point but I also don't hold the ill will that I did around that that rough launch so um, but I'll be curious you know now there's less pressure just get in there and you know create your own uh, own region of cities and 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 kind of um, control your own destiny in that regard but um, I don't know it was just. These are two companies that are supposed to kind of have their shit together, and 
to see how bumpy of a road both these games have had and then for them both to kind of hit a milestone like this on the same day that's uh that's kind of that's kind of strange yeah but uh, at the same time these are both C- pc games mm-hmm. and that is the uh, it's got to be the loudest whiniest bunch of bitches on the entire internet oh i don't know about that there's some uh, I don't I don't know about that. There are who is lo- more louder? I mean, other than Justin Bieber fans. Dude, have you have you pay, have you been involved in any console war discussions? Like I would say, pla- I, I, write, I write the console war discussion off right up front because it's not like you're talking about loyalty to but, your family. But or I'm, t- I'm telling you the coffee the, versus tea. You're talking about platform fanboys, and the PC has them as big as the consoles do, but they're all equally loud and whiny. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't place one above the other. Is all I would say. That's probably fair, but on the other, well, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't care about this enough to argue about it. <laughs> I, I think it's where I'm going. I know what you care about the most, and that's virtual reality. And you know, we need. We need at least three companies working on this. We need we need Oculus Rift. You know they're gonna they're gonna take care of their crowd. But I'm so glad to find out find out that you know I think about a month or so ago Sony confirmed they're working on their virtual reality stuff. And this week it was confirmed that that Microsoft is also working on a virtual reality technology of their own. So. Hey. Uh, if anybody missed that, that was uh, Justin's sarcastic font. <laughs> Dude, Oculus Rift nailed it. I, the stuff I've read about Sony, and I tried to find the first article I read about the Sony project, mm-hmm. was this is dumb. It doesn't work all that well. It's uncomfortable, and Oculus Rift is better. I don't. Um, I don't get. What it was from somebody who'd worn both of them. I have nothing about Microsoft other than hey, they're working on it. Okay. Like, this is a. A technology that tried and failed once and then, you know, coming off of, you know, our, our motion gaming fads and, and, and our... Your motion gaming fads. <laughs> and um, the, you know, the, the continued focus, like 3D and the continued focus on just trying to play games on, you know, uh, multiple devices at the same time, like with some, some of the tablet gaming stuff, like... Kind the of surface and the Wii, the Wii U, and it's this just kind of me too mentality gets pretty annoying. And and three, I just want to see, I just want to see the Oculus come out, and then then let's iterate. Let's not like, I don't, you don't know how that thing is going to actually if it's going to break through, I guess. And then to yeah. see, you know, Microsoft and Sony kind of doing their own thing. Like Sony doesn't surprise me. You know, they're they're a devices company much more so than. That Microsoft yeah. has has proven themselves to be. Um, well, Sony probably got their ass. I mean, they lost two billion dollars in 2013. <laughs> uh, like not just Sony Computer Entertainment, right. but like Sony, and a lot, they had a shitload tied up in 3D. So they need to knock something out of the park. But I'm surprised. I am surprised that Microsoft's just jumping on. Yeah, and I'm like, just... as far as I know, they don't even have a prototype. I mean, honestly, I like th- I expected one of them to partner up with them and the other one to counter with their own technology and to just know that they're all kind of dedicating their own resources. It's just like, I don't know. It's like Sony with their uncomfortable, unusable device. And then, you know, I'm picturing, you know, everybody, every, we, we see the connect, we want the holodeck and you throw in some virtual reality glasses with that. And, you know, it has some, uh, that's that's a pretty awesome dream come true, but you just imagine the actual nightmare scenario that is going on right now in their R and D for this, and they think that's what they're making. But oh shit, some indie company came up with angel funding and the device, and they're gonna beat us. And holy crap, we better come up with one. It was. Uh, I I just I wanted to, I wanted to believe that we weren't gonna be heading down this path, but it's. So predictable that it was kind of sad. So sorry, this has been. I, I didn't mean to choose the topic and sound so jaded, but it was just. These are the things that kind of caught my attention. <laughs> um, um, but um, you've been playing um one of the one of the highlights of the next generation of gaming's, but games. But I kind of want to talk about you know Titanfall's out there for Xbox One. This is the the week that Infamous 
Second Son comes out for PlayStation 4. So, but but up until this point, as far as new games and just kind of the slow roll of this first uh, quarter or so of the new consoles, what do you think is going on? I'm I'm not happy. I mean, <laughs> to put it bluntly, um, and I'll admit my memory is not all that clear about the last round because it was almost nine years ago. Um, but man, like you guys knew this was coming out. Uh, I know that there was a pretty big hardware jump, especially with the PlayStation Three deciding to go Blu-ray. Um, but I was, I guess, I've been sort of disappointed slash surprised at how slowly stuff is coming out. Um, it's been, I mean, I haven't. We, we got well, we've got Watch Dogs in May, um, and then. There's no official release date for Quantum Break, mm-hmm. and I guess uh, what Destiny is not is that August? It's I think it's actually September. So, so I knew it was late summer. Yeah. So I'm just surprised that there's not more stuff coming out. The better. I mean I think the Watch Dogs delay hurt everybody because that was kind of I know a lot of people that that was why they were buying a console like mm-hmm. at, at last year like no matter your platform of choice and then. Um, you know, Infamous was always the one out there for PlayStation 4, but I could have waited, you know, at this point. And then yeah. um, I'm still kind of waiting on, personally waiting on that that one for the Xbox One. I have a feeling when I get it, I'll have two or three games to play, but I don't really know what that's going to be. But I'm mostly surprised that, like, you know, Sony definitely was out there touting their indie games that were coming to the cons- to the platform. And then Microsoft's been making some moves there as well. Um, Are there actually... Games on Xbox One Arcade to download? No, that's I don't think so. Like that. Okay, that, I didn't I didn't think so either because I was like, you know, something I don't. They, I mean, today today they announced twenty five games that are actually coming to the platform. Twenty five indie games. They've been doing the whole. These are the you know these are development partners that are going to be working with us. But it's like, yeah. How about games and release dates of games? Can you get us? Can can we have some games? Can we play the games? It's frustrating to go on Amazon like, and be like, uh. Oh, oh! There's no release date for this yet because I bought these headphones without a release date, and it was a freaking month and a half before they finally released. <laughs> um, I mean, I, after the original release date, to to clarify that. So I mean, I we knew it was going to be kind of be a, a lull, but I really thought there'd be a couple like just small surprises along along the way to kind of keep us keep us entertained, and you know, um, you know, it's. In between Infamous and, and Destiny, I don't really, I don't really know what's going on. You know, it's nice to see like Arkham Knight and uh, get mm. announced, and like their the holiday is starting to fill up a little bit. But you know, Witcher Three got delayed till next year. That was another big one, um, and you know, still kind of waiting for those with that next wave of first party stuff from both from both companies to see um, what they what they've co- got coming. And uh, it's just been, you know, I. I guess we expected it, but it's been a little bit more painful than I expected at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that that sums it up. But on the other hand, I've gotten to catch up on quite a bit of uh, stuff on the 360 that I <laughs> I don't know if I would have gotten to otherwise. So, you know. Um, but new games I am excited about. Um, the so did you do you, did you play any Magicka? Do you know anything about Magicka before I get going here? Magicka. No, that's Hexen. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so the team that developed Magicka, which is a four-player kind of wizard game, um, all you mm. basically need to know is you have um, half a dozen elements that when you tap their keys you, and, you, and put them down in a certain order, it'll cast a spell. Like if you cast like two fire and an ice, it'll you know cast a, a meteor or something. Or two fire and oh, earth, so... it'll cast a meteor. And Okay. Um, but... The most fun aspect of that game to me was when you play co-op with somebody. If you like call in a meteor shower, your wizard and your co-op buddy wizard also have to dodge all these meteors because <laughs> friendly fire is on, and you can you can kill yourself. So it had it had a really quirky sense of humor, but fun gameplay at, at the same time. Anyway, these guys, Arrowhead Studios, um, they are working on the new Gauntlet game, and okay, uh, the trailer's awesome. That was uh, released this week, and you know, I've been playing, and we've played a few of the, you know, the indie PC dungeon crawlers, four-player local co-op, and 
you know, some of those I always reference, oh, this kind of feels like, you know, this could be, this is kind of like the inspired by Gauntlet or the next Gauntlet, and to actually see a true-to-form, really good-looking uh, Gauntlet, ca- Gauntlet game on the horizon got me got me really excited. It just, it had, it's back to, down to the kind of isometric perspective. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like an arcade game. It looks like Gauntlet, Dungeon Crawler, like meets, Gauntlet meets Diablo 3, but not with all the weight of the rpg of Diablo 3. Just a lot more uh, kind of, I don't know, fun, fun action and uh, lots of promise there. And like I said, if they, if they have like a friendly fire mode, I think that could be, that could be a pretty good time. How do you have friendly fire mode? I mean, because I'm just remembering. I don't think it, I don't think it should be on. Which was sweet, but yeah. like, because <laughs> I'm thinking about that barbarian throwing like a three wide spread of axes. Yeah, and yeah. The yeah. wizard's just like, oh, wizard needs health. Yeah, but if, but at, just give it give me the option is all I'm saying because <laughs> I don't think I would enjoy playing it for very long, but it'd still be funny as hell. So especially like to have it on and not tell your buddies and then. You know, that's kind of the way I was picturing it. But um, then you sent me a link to uh, an indie game, and uh, um, you want to talk me through it? Um, is, is this the link I'm thinking? Is this the javelin? Oh, so this was one of the funniest things, and I have got to download this. It was originally, I believe, made in a game jam, sort of as a joke. Mm-hmm. Um, in the not exactly in the realm of Splunky, but still in this stupidly hard uh, platformer exploration thing. And you have one javelin. Uh, it's called the. Uh, I think it's Ein Javelin. Yeah, it's got a. It's you got some weird Ein Yager or something like that. I can't remember, but um, and we will actually post the link so you can yeah. see what the hell we're talking about. Um, but just the review I read of it was hysterical because the guy's like having a great time at the beginning when there's, uh, you know, there's ground everywhere and everything. But uh, apparently, you have one javelin. That's it. That's all. You, that's your entire weapon. You have to kill everything to clear the screen and and to get from one end of the map to the other. And at the end, there's a picture of like his javelin stuck in this platform, floating over a black abyss like into the side of it and he's like i can't get the javelin without dying and and <laughs> i think the caption was something like this is you have no idea how sad this this is this makes me cry yeah it was it was hysterically funny and uh i am i'm kind of just looking forward to playing it because you know it'll be five bucks or ten bucks or something like they that they got the web versions out there and like the a demo of it and um Javeline. Yeah, so I played a little bit of it, and uh, you know, I think they said like sixty levels, and so yeah, es- essentially you're just running through this platformer, and you just have the one javelin. It's it's your only weapon. If you lose it, you're screwed, and um, it 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 has that um that difficulty spike, and but but great platforming physics to uh, to make it pretty fun and frustratingly hard but also entertaining so it it check it out for sure i feel like that's a party game <laughs> i think it could, i mean I or, think, or like a, a marathon game you know sort of like the uh uh super uh, i was saying like give me like a javelin javelin wars type of type of experience <laughs> where it's you know four four player free for all four javelins and just spearing each other then you know, combine that with the super pole writers and, and you've got something. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so before we, I have some thoughts and some background on the new Shaq Fu game, but I want to know what you know about it. I want to, I want to get your, like your gut reaction to me. Say, do you want to talk about the new Shaq Fu game? Okay. My, <laughs> my gut reaction, to this it was started out laughing and then I thought about Cole. Um, and then I was like, okay, he, I, this has got to be a joke. Like, I know it's not a joke, this has got to be a joke. So I went to the Indiegogo page for Shaq Fu, Fu 2, or whatever the hell it's called. And it's like, these guys are talking, at, let's see, what did he say? Oh, yeah, we got tired of bowing to the monolithic men with the money and wanted to work with people who care about the quality of the product. <laughs> Like, 
Shaq Fu is a horrible fighting game. It was a stupid idea in the first place, and you guys want to remake it? Like, we're still waiting for a remake or a sequel to uh, Eternal Darkness, and you remaking Shaq Fu? What the hell? <laughs> and I, and Shaq so it was not. Money. It, yeah, and it was not like an Onion site. That, I, I think I, I was. Thought it, I thought it was satire. I was just like, "This yeah. is not the Onion." What the hell? That was my favorite. My favorite reaction is you didn't. You didn't think it was a real a real thing. So, I mean, that. Did you watch the pitch video with Shaq just kind of sitting in an empty movie theater or wherever the hell he was talking about it? No. Yeah, it's uh, it's. <laughs> I'm just gonna waste time watching it's Shaq awkward. talk about Shaq Fu. And you know, like, I mean, Shaq's got a. He's got a social media following. He's got his. He got his thing. But I don't. I. I don't think that audience is the I'm going to fund a video game audience. And, well, and their rewards are horrible. I, I wasn't one of them. He'll follow you on Twitter. Is Yeah. yeah so, the rewards are terrible. It's just it's kind of interesting to see the sports world kind of collide with this, you know, a crowdfunded indie game uh, um, community. And... I don't know. I actually let's. I haven't checked on it. Let's see how it's actually. How's it actually doing? Because he's raised ninety nine thousand of four hundred fifty k so far. Um, I'm trying that's to think of when it started. Than, that's that's ninety eight thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars more than it deserves. <laughs> like oh, that man. could be going to support some indie game that's awesome. And uh, like, who are we? We've got okay. He's got. Industry video game industry professionals that come from legendary projects like Halo, Street Fighter, Final Fantasy, just the combination of those three, like, you know, get, give me my Halo designers and make me a fighting game in my in Final Fantasy. Alan Wake, like, that's just, oh man, it it it. it yeah. I wish it was satire, but it was. Uh, I don't it's know. Not. It was also a really fun, funny story of the day. So, um. Let's move on to our games of the week. I, I would talk about Towerfall, um, but I don't think you you've played it, and I we've I can have a little bit better conversation about my other game. But I just want to kind of give a nod to something that you pointed out. Um, our uh, one of our f- uh, friends of the site, indie gamer chick, she um, posted a, a, an editorial related to the, the fact that there are some games out there that with her epilepsy that she cannot play because of. Wow. You know, you see those warnings of games like the of the flashing flashing lights may cause seizures, and she's she's afflicted by that. And she's wrote some wonderful editorials on how she deals with that in games. And then um, she tweeted out a photo of the the settings for Towerfall that basically you have the option to turn those flashing effects off, which yeah was like revelatory. Why it has how how do you put that warning in front of so many games and just not have the option to it. remove it? Like, or, and I guess, yeah. I don't know. Were you? I don't know if you followed that conversation on Twitter, but I mean, she got a reaction from a lot of indie game or, or indie game developers, mm-hmm. including some big ones, who were like, uh, "That tell, has tell actually need, never occurred to us. Yeah. What do we need to fix?" And I don't. I think this is gonna. You're gonna see this in in bigger games from here on out. It's just. It's just started a. Uh, an interesting movement and something that people really weren't, you know, they weren't concerned with and weren't talking about, but at the same time, they're all aware of it because how long have those warnings been around? And yeah, it was, uh, it was just a really cool moment to see. And, and, and she deserves all the kind of the, the, her relationship with the indie development development scenes, just one of the more honest ones out there. And, um, it was just really cool to see, um, some good come from all of that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, Towerfall would have been my game of the week, uh, but what is your game of the week? Uh, mine is definitely Titanfall. Um, I got that on release, and then I didn't really get to play it. And then I maxed out my data on my phone because my internet was down, uh, so I uh, used that as the hotspot. But regardless, um, it's been awesome. The single player is essentially non-existent. The plot is really dumb. Um, and I don't care. I was gonna say, but I, I didn't just, buy it for any of those reasons. It's it's so much fun. Um, but tell me, take, you you were at least curious how they're gonna try to pull off that multiplayer campaign, though, right? 
I didn't even realize it was all okay. multiplayer campaign. All right. I just I was like, hey, Max, okay, I'm in. Here, take my money. <laughs> so what's your what? Yeah, tell me, tell me, like, what are you what are you loving about it? Um, I, I, a lot of a lot. I it's you <laughs> level up quickly, Big guns rules? unlock quickly. Uh, it's parkour. At least so far, I'm not getting wasted by the college kids. Uh. Running along the walls. They can't the afford Xbox One. Is, well, there are some people who are like prestiged four times, so, which is considering the game came out one I, week ago is really stupid. I think all giant robots are prestigious. Just that's one of my yeah. stances. Um, the weapons are good. They're well balanced. Um, I like the giant robots. Mm-hmm. I, just it's a really well balanced game. I, I have a lot of fun playing it, and you know they didn't. I, I wish they would do something a little bit more creative with the game mo- game modes, because mm-hmm. uh, it's you know straightforward stuff. Uh, but it covers, but, but it covered the core bases too. It, it like. covers the core bases, yeah. And I also like the fact that there are, uh, I don't know, the, there's AI like all over, just grunts running around that sort of fill out the screen. So it's not just six. So I can six. so I can get points. That's the way I look at that. Yeah, like I can play. That I can play can this game, points. and I could get some points because I suck yeah. at these games. But. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, the other cool thing in reading the reviews and just uh, that I didn't catch in any of the pre-release coverage was, can you talk me through like the drop ship at the end of the missions, like how that all works? Uh, it's the mechanic is very similar to the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Um, in that once you lose, you've got, I think it's 30 seconds. You tell me. To haul, to, I think it's 30 seconds to haul ass across the map to get to your dropship. And uh, once that happens, um, you have to do some climbing to get up to it, jump in, and then people can continue to shoot at you and try and destroy your dropship. Um, and have they you, can blow up your dropship while it's waiting to take off. Have you blown up a dropship? I've helped. Okay. Even, but you haven't gotten the kill shot? I don't think so. I don't know. That sounded exciting to me. I, like, I, I really liked that addition to Mass Effect uh, in the multiplayer. That was like one of the, that was kind of one of those like little, little bonuses that was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with this multiplayer. This is kind of fun. And um, th- the fact that they incorporated that, incorporated that into the, the competitive shooter is, mm-hmm. is really cool to me. And just, um, and that was, I knew about the parkour, I knew about the giant robots, and but I knew the gameplay was going to be tight and the verticality and blah, 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 blah the speed, all that stuff. But th- that somehow slipped through the cracks. And I was like, you know, that, sound, that sounds pretty cool. Um, it's pretty sweet. I, and you can even hose people down when they're sitting in the, the door. I mean, all, so it's like right. a helicopter. But the mil- million dollar questions console seller? Uh, for me, so far, yeah. Okay. And then yeah, that kind of first game where I'm like, okay, I get it. And then, um, how do you feel about the sixty dollars price point? Doesn't bother me at all. all right. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna get my money's worth out of it. I I I will qualify that with if you're gonna charge sixty dollars for anything where the multiplayer is not this tight and enjoyable, <laughs> you better have a, <laughs> this a, is a decent single player. This might be the bare minimum you can get away with for a full yeah. priced o- multiplayer only experience. Got it. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, um, I don't know. So we've been playing a lot of free to play stuff on the PC. Like I've got, so I've got Planet Side Two. I've got, I've got Warframe. I've got Loadout, and I've we just started playing Hawken. So Hawken for my mechs, uh, Loadout for my like competitive shooter, I guess. Warframe mm. for my co op play, and then Planet Side for my like getting vehicles and and military space military stuff. Um, and I've started dropping money in, in, into those games, but like th- the fact that I've been absorbed in that world and then looking over to see Titanfall at that price point has, um, it's raised some questions. I don't, I don't doubt it'll be successful. Um, but it's gonna, going to be, there's going to be some interesting conversations like, um, as, as those lines between, like, I, I recognize all the games I mentioned are kind of PC, PC gamer focused. Mm. Um, but Warframe did come out on the PlayStation 4, and I think you're going to start to see more free-to-play model types of games hit the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. And I wonder, like, if one of those becomes prevalent on the consoles, like, it actually gets some traction, if that'll um, 
kind of raise the conversation when the Call of Duties and the next Titanfall and uh, those yeah. games come out. I mean, my problem with free to play is always going to be the same. It's is this pay to win? Because if it's pay to win or pay to advance, I'm not playing it. I don't care right. how no, good I, the rest of your game is. Like, if it's competitive multiplayer and it's pay to win, kiss my ass. Yeah, I, like, I'll pay the sixty dollar price point. I I agree more, but um, keep it keep an eye on that stuff because these games are they are maturing and like I don't know I pl- when we loaded up when we loaded up loadout the the just the smoothness of that of that experience um, mm-hmm. and with no barrier to entry was uh, kind of surprising and then um, you know I think you know for me. Uh, Titanfall still just has that 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 barrier of entry with th- that at its core. For me to dump dozens of hours into it, it's got to it's got to appeal to that same Call of Duty appreciation in me that I don't I don't really yeah. have for long extended amounts of time. Like, and I I get that I'm not the audience, but that's that's ultimately me. I hang up, even though I do want to kind of jump in some giant robots. Yeah. Do you do you um. How do you use your Titan? What's your Titan strategy? Do you? Uh, I my favorite one is the I don't remember the names, but it's the lightweight one mm-hmm. uh, that has three boost bars, so you sort of skate over the ground. Um, I like being. Do you uh, like getting in the Titan? To, uh, you just hit X. No, I mean, do I you mean, like? I, I've I've read um, like strategies of the, yeah. Uh, What's your Titan strategy? Yeah, I, guess, I, is think, my... I think I, I prefer to be on a Titan, let somebody in an ogre go up, which is the big heavy duty one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess in MMO terms, I'm a, a, a ranged guy. Sure. Like I will let an ogre go in and slug it out, and I'll use long range stuff and just cool. hose somebody down. Cool. So, Strider, yeah. thank you, <laughs> Jordan. Um, so. My game of the week, outside of trying to survive in t- Towerfall and get to level up my characters in Diablo three, um, I've been playing. I've been playing South Park in kind of my downtime. And are you a South Park fan at all? I like the show, but I mean, I haven't watched the show other than the movie in probably five years. Gotcha. Um, the it's funny, it's just timing. The I. This is the like the the best fan service video game I have ever participated in. Like this, the the density of the jokes in, in South Park are going to stick with me for a really really long time. Um, mm-hmm. The bonus is that it is a enjoyable lightweight RPG on top of it. Like it's it's cool. actually kind of pulls from the Paper Mario um, kind of active combat of you know everything looks like the old classic sixteen bit. Um, battle system except you know whenever you attack there's a moment where you can hit your attack button again and do extra damage or or you can hit hit the button when you're getting attacked to kind of defend a, a little bit more so it keeps you engaged in the combat but ultimately the, the challenge isn't going to be like what attack playing. buster or stuff I, I remember seeing people play paper mario and they do something and then just wail on one of the yeah. buttons yep. feel, yeah yeah a lot of that stuff um that it just keeps you engaged in what would be an otherwise pretty boring or um, uh, what's the word? Just just average gameplay Run of the system. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's not making any waves in the RPG world, but where it does make waves is just the density of the content and just the fact that um, you know I've kind of had two heavy stints with South Park. Kind of had that early mm. stint, and then and then right after the movie, but I haven't really watched the last couple of years. But there are just so many references and so many jokes that are just kind of scattered to the wind here but they they still resonate like the the best part to illustrate it is the fact that whenever you are fighting or collecting things in the world you know you'll collect some money you might collect some equipment that you can use but you also collect all this junk and the junk Mm -hmm. is usually you you just you just sell it in stores for money but it's 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 a reference from some episode it's like it's just like you know, I make a, a, a Barbra Streisand doll or, you know, a, and, and just... Brian it, Boitano action figure. Yeah, it's like, the things you, if you weren't into the show, you just would completely ignore. But if you like the show, you're going to get a chuckle out of half the stuff that you collect. And nice. um, that, the, that the thought went into that level of detail can kind of see, you know, where they're going with the actual quest stuff. Like, it, if you like South Park, uh, even a little bit, you'll you'll get a huge kick out of this game. And... It is. I, 
it's going to be over too soon, no matter what happens. Um, it's only yeah. supposed to be like a 12 hour game, but I think oh, that's, a, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, with all the stuff you're saying, they packed into it. That makes sense, but, but it's but, a bummer, but it's, it's paced really well. And it's kind of yeah. like after a certain amount of time, how much do you really want this game to go on? And like the family guy movies, yeah, family guys, a half an hour show. They make it, it a two hour movie. And it's like, stop. I would argue that it needs to family guy needs to be a adult swim length show, but, that's fair. <laughs> but I, I, if anybody with a passing interest, interest in the show, just it's it's kind of, uh, I would say almost a good swan song for fans to like. I don't know how long the show is going to continue to go on from here, but this is, you know, they they finally did right by the the by a franchise of that caliber in video games, and that's pretty cool. And as a as a fan of Matt and Trey for for this long, it's just you can just feel their their hands in this game and. Um, the fact that it's still a really playable, enjoyable game is just kind of the bonus. So, awesome. I will say that it is better than South Park '64, hands down. <laughs> okay, noted. No turkeys. So, I think it's going to do it uh, for tonight's show. We actually got through everything, Justin. That was impressive. Um, yeah. And then um, you're going to be back with us uh, in two weeks um, for your yes. most likely your. Final podcast before that thing arrives. For a while. Yeah. yeah. So, but we'll uh, we'll we'll definitely check in with you, hear from you on the site, and, and look forward to our next top video game podcast in two weeks. And we'll see you next time. Awesome.